Hi, fifth grade friends. We are on the last chapter. We get to find out how this all wrapped up. Now, when we left off on the last chapter, it was pretty exciting. We had the Nins switch sides. They got sick of Grunto. Um, and so the Nins and their leader, Bulge, or Bludge, Bludge, excuse me, skipped, are on the good side now. And then we found out something about the Night Fox. If you go back in your book, you should have your book with you so you can follow along. The page opposite of a page 105, so probably 104, is a picture of a two-headed dog. We found out that this was the Night Fox. The Night Fox was wearing a mask that made it look like the Night Fox, but when it came off, it was really this two-headed dog, which they said is named Kem. And Kem, on page 105, says... It was Kem, Lord Spar's pet dog, whom the children had not seen in a very long time. And that's why he recognized Spar's Tuscadon, said Kia. And we find out that when Spar sees his dog, it makes him like want to be nice, want to be kind. He makes him happy. So, okay, chapter 10, the way up and out. The ceiling of the giant cavern quaked and the sand showered everyone like rain. So it's like caving in on them. Children, escape to the passages and into the desert, said Mashta. We shall look for a new home. No, said Bludge. Nins will defend the sand children and the humans and Kumba. We will do this for the Lord Spar we knew once knew. So I'm going to pause already. Do a stop. Read, or stop, reco read, recover, remember, retell. Right there, it said that the Nins are going to defend the Sand Children, so they're on the Sand Children's side, and the humans, so that's Neil and Julie and Kia, and probably Hob, even though he's like a troll, and Kumba, and we will do this for the Lord, Lord Spar we once knew. So that makes me think that the Nins knew Lord Spar when he was kind. Roo, howled Kem. Then he ran for the Tuscadon and leaped into its cabin. Wait a second. Spar's toy, said Julie. Of course. Everyone, come on. We can defeat the beast, and we can do it right here. It was decided in an instant. Bludge would lead his red-faced warriors, those are the nins, and the sand children through the passages and up to the surface, while the kids would defend the underdune. Neil, Julie, Kia, the Hinkles, and Hob crowded inside the Iron Beast with Kem. They revved up the machine's giant engine. It quivered and wobbled. It shook and teetered. They drove it right under the Star Dune's entrance hole. So they're in the Tuscadon. Here we come, announced Sliver. And the Snakeling slid into the entrance and slid, slithered down the stairs. Trunks up, asked Julie. Trunks up, Kia affirmed. The steam built up more and more until the iron beast seemed ready to explode. Now, said Neil. No, said Kia. Sand fell on the trembling Tuscanon and the snakelings came closer. Now, asked Julie. Not yet, said Kia. The Tuscanon rocked on its iron legs. The plates on its sides rattled and shook. The rivets began to loosen one by one. Now, cried Hob. Now, said Kia. Together, the children pulled the lever. Wham! A gigantic spout of steam burst from the Tuscadon's iron trunks. It shot upward, blowing the top of the dune completely off. Sand exploded everywhere, and the shrieking, hissing beasts were thrown back into the crimson desert. When Sliver stopped rolling, he was twisted in a knot and struggled to stand. Where are the little ones and the elixir? Remember, the elixir is the same thing as the fazool. At that moment, Bludge and his nins clambered out of the distant passages back up to the surface. Using all the slyness he could munster, the nin leader shouted, Look there! I see them escaping! Far away across the dunes, the children, the elixir, and the night fox. Hurry, beasts! Let's go after them! Follow, squealed, Sliver. Follow, boomed, Captain Grun Grunto. So the children are getting away, and Grunto and Sliver and the snakelings are trying to follow them. While Bludge and the four other nins hid, the rest of the red-faced com compatriots 
drew the beast quickly across the red sand and into the far distance. Leaving the Tuscanon on the floor of the Underdune, Julie, Kia, Neil, Hob, the Hinkles, Kem, Bludge, and the four nins met Masha and her tiny people. They stood alone in the brightening skies. Those are good nins, Bludge said of his fellow warriors. Warriors, good men, loyal and true. After such a long while, I'm happy to be myself again. Good for you, said Empress Mashta, and thank you for your help. We desert folk will inhibit the ancient empire of Kumba, lost no longer. The sand children cheered, so they're going to go live in those golden passages that Julie found. With Kem's help, remember Kem is the two-headed dog, said the red-faced warrior, our little battle band of five nins will reunite Lord Spar with his long-lost past. We will turn him away from Gethwig's power and break the crown of the wizards forever. Hooray for Bludge, shouted the nins, our captain once more. So that shows you that these five nins and Bludge are turning to be good. Bludge bowed his head and raised it. Our first mission to find Lord Spar. Roo, roo, wailed Kem excitedly. With that as their signal, Captain Bludge and his band raced across the sands with Kem at the lead plotting Lord Spar's return. I'm wondering when Lord Spar sees them if he's going to be good or not. Julie gave the silver vial to Kia with a smile. Hard to believe, but I guess we did it. Ah, that reminds me, said the Empress Mashta. <clears throat> Sandchild stepped forward holding a velvet pillow they had seen before. On the pillow sat a young wingling's claw. Julie, please accept this as our gift, said the Empress as a remembrance of how your abilities have helped us all today. So we see the picture of Julie getting the claw, which gave her the abilities to um, shape change and her visions in the past um, and to fly. And that will help her remember those because they really did help her. Really, said Julie. Really and truly, said Masha. Julie took the claw and bowed. Thank you. Does that thing over there mean it's time to go home, asked Mr. Hinkle. He pointed. As the moon finally vanished in the brightening sky, the rainbow stairs shimmered into view. They looked brighter than ever. I guess we better get back, said Neil, so we can return ASAP. Masha twirled her short staff in the air. We have much work to do, she said. After we restore Kumba, the sand children and I will gather bands of folk all across Strewn. We must rise up against Gethwig. The city shall not be burned. We shall win. The little folk cheered again. And I'm wondering, we haven't gotten Eric yet, so hopefully they don't forget him. We have work too, said Kia. She turned to Neil and Julie. With the Fazul, we may find a way to cure Eric. We'll solve Galen's riddle and find the moon medallion. In the meantime, Hob, you and I will ride to Zor Pfeffendorf like the wind. Do what you can for our son, said Mrs. Hinkle, her eyes brimming with tears. He means everything to us. Mr. Hinkle placed his arm around his wife and nodded. We are trusting in you. Kia nodded firmly. I won't fail. May Hob add that you are quite legendary, said Hob, bowing to the Hinkles. It's been a pleasure to know you. Moments later, Kia and Hob were riding swiftly across the Red Sands to Zorfendorf. As Masha and her sand children cheered, Julie Neal, Mr. and Mrs. Hinkle made their way towards the staircase. Halfway to the top, Julie felt a warm breeze drift across her cheek. It was unlike the desert breezes, and she knew what it meant. In her mind's eyes, she saw a lanky figure run silently across a flat stretch of black ground. It was followed closely by two others just like it. All three had heavy sacks hanging over their shoulders. I see the hunters, she said, but where are they? Searching her vision, Julie realized she knew the place. It was the parking lot of her school. A moment later, the three figures slipped inside the school doors and vanished. Quickly, she told Neil and Hinkles what she had seen. The hunters are at our school, said Neil. Maybe they're still there. Let's go teach them a lesson. Let's give them some kind of detention. Let's expel them. That sounds like a battle, said Mr. Hinkle. It's lucky we're on the job now. Bob said we're legendary. Hob, dear, said Mrs. Hinkle. And I think he was referring to me. Either way, kids, 
From now on, we're helping you every inch of the way. Julie and Neil shared a look. Oh, brother, here we go again. So we finished the book and we're left wondering. We don't actually see them get Eric the Fazool. Do you think he and Hob got the Fazool and saved Eric? Who do you think these hunters are? I want to go back and read in here and figure out where did they talk about the hunters that are at their school? It leaves you with some questions. And that's an author's craft because this author probably wants you to read the next book to find out. So what are your thoughts on this chapter? Did you like how it ended? Did you not like how you ended? Why or why not? That's going to be your response today. And I would like you to write at least four sentences on either why you like how it ended, what were the good things about it, or why you didn't like how it ended. As readers, we can sometimes like and sometimes we don't like how our books play out, and that's okay. But we need, should have reasons for it. So I'd like you to use some evidence from the book. What did you like that happened? Or what were the things that you didn't like that happened? Okay, and at book club, so that's what you're going to do for your writing. And then at book club, we're going to see if there's some themes in this book, if we want to add any to our themes that we thought about earlier this year, or earlier in this book. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed it. If you are a little confused, remember you can always go back and reread or re-listen to the book and then go ahead to your assignment and write. Did you like how it ended or did you not and why? All right, I will see you on, on Thursday. Bye.